Welcome back. And today we're looking at Fedora 31 Workstation. And uh, yeah, I don't know, this video is gonna be pretty short because aside from GNOME 3.34 and some exciting but iterative uh, developments on the Wayland side of things, uh, Fedora just slowly ticks along doing what Fedora does best. And, uh, and that is, at least on the Workstation side of things, providing a pretty vanilla uh, GNOME installation uh, so you've got all the latest goodies in the GNOME desktop environment to play around with. And uh, you've got plenty of Fedora spins to choose from, which are always great. And uh, yeah, I don't know, aside from that, there's a few other things that I'm going to dig into here in just a moment. But uh, the bottom line here is that if you're already running Fedora, just go and update to the latest version, uh, because there's always goodies to play around with, with the latest revisions of desktop environments, kernels, and all the underlying stuff. Uh, but if you're not already on Fedora, I don't think there's anything here that's gonna convince you to jump on the Fedora bandwagon straight away. I'd say if you're curious, probably it's worth checking out something like Fedora Silverblue because that is a much more different beast. Anyway, let's get on with uh, what is new in Fedora 31 Workstation. Okay, so I'm gonna do this video a little bit differently in that usually I will talk about what's new in the release and then I will sort of highlight those things as they become relevant on the desktop. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm actually just gonna do a pretty gentle kind of walk around uh, what is going on here just in GNOME in general these days because as this is a fairly stock uh, vanilla version of GNOME, it gives us a good sense of uh, what the GNOME team have been up to over these last few months and it also gives us a good idea for the Fedora team about uh, performance on back-end type stuff. So, what I want to say first of all out of the box is that uh, GNOME, it, it's certainly been the same user paradigm now for uh, for quite a few years. I believe GNOME 3 originally came in 2011 and it fundamentally has remained the same. So the default theming and the default fonts and all those kinds of things are, uh, are iteratively been updated. And I was, I've got to say the overall visual uh, consistency of GNOME and the Edwaiter theme is, is better than ever. The icons look great uh, and, uh, and performance with the Mutter window manager and, uh, and everything going on in the background, animations and all that kind of thing seem really smooth. Now, you'll notice that around the desktop, we just have the top panel, which is classic for GNOME. We've got the calendar and notification shade on the, uh, in the middle there. You've got the controls for, the, uh, for power and for um, adjusting simple um, Bluetooth controls, wireless, that kind of thing. They're all bundled into this panel here. And then over here, we have the activities button, which simply spreads out whatever uh, windows that you have open on your desktop at any given time uh, so that you can kind of see what you're working on. Now, usually this can be triggered by holding or by tapping the meta key. And, uh, and the idea behind the GNOME workflow, if you're not familiar with it already, is that rather than minimizing and maximizing windows, because you'll see there's nothing that can let you control those out of the box, rather than doing that, uh, you simply hit the meta key and you pick between the windows that you want. And you can use dynamic workspaces to shift up and down in the desktop uh, to have as many windows uh, open and spread all over the desktop as you like. Uh, so while this particular workflow isn't for everyone, I definitely can see the advantages. Uh, it can be very keyboard driven when you want to because of the uh, how different keyboard shortcuts are mapped to different parts of the desktop. But of course, as we know, most people take the time to customize GNOME how they like it. And, uh, and I'll chuck a link up in the cards to a walkthrough that I did of how I set up my uh, Fedora release when the Fedora 29, I believe it was, when Fedora 29 came out. Uh, yeah, so you guys can go check that out and see what I do with this distribution when, uh, when I first set it up. Now, uh, let's talk about some stuff that is kind of new in the visual space here. So first of all, the fact that um, we are now sitting at version 70, I believe, with Firefox. Let me just double check this to make sure that I am not just, uh, I'm not just running away with false information. Yep, so version 70. Now, what is unique to the Fedora situation is that they have actually gone ahead and uh, enabled a Wayland backend for Firefox, further, uh, I guess, pushing Wayland into uh, into a potential future where it could become uh, default for a lot more Linux distros than, than Fedora. So by default, Fedora does use Wayland out of the box. It's a more modern desktop, um, uh, it's a more modern display uh, manager, display server. 
and it has uh, much more potential to do high pixel density displays, uh, smoother animations, and lower power consumption than X11, which was uh, which has kind of been the go-to display server for for quite some time now. So on the Fedora Magazine's website, they've got a few tips about uh, what sort of restrictions you will have if you're trying to use Firefox in particular on Wayland, uh, because of the fact it now has a Wayland backend by default on Fedora Workstation. And basically all it comes down to is, as long as you're not wanting to use Flash, you're all good. You're probably gonna benefit uh, from this. Okay, so uh, aside from that, You've got a new wallpaper picker in GNOME 3.34, uh, which basically just lets you select the wallpaper and the lock screen uh, a little bit clearer now than what it was before, which is great. And you can also add your own pictures and folders to that collection as well if you want. And probably the most visible change in the GNOME desktop in general is the ability to create custom application folders. So for example, if I didn't want LibreOffice to take up all of this space, I could simply just start dumping all of the LibreOffice applications into one Office folder, and there they all are. Uh, so that's nice, it can help clean up this, uh, this application selector a little bit, but chances are most people who use GNOME are going to go ahead and install GNOME Tweaks, and, uh, and then you know customize the desktop to how they like it. Um, the meta search and, uh, and meta key are really, the, are really the bread and butter of the GNOME desktop these days. The search that's built into GNOME is really powerful. Let's say I wanted to install an application like uh, Scribus. Just by typing Scribus in the search bar at the top, it suggests that I can open the uh, software center and it will take me straight to Scribus's uh, page in the software center, which is pretty nice. There's a bunch of other ways that that meta search can help you out as well. But for right now, I am going to simply install uh, NeoFetch so we can see what's going on in the system. And I'm also gonna install HTOP so we can see what kind of uh, resource management we've got going on here. What I will say is that uh, the, the DNF package manager, it just seems so solid uh, compared to apt, compared to every other package manager that's out there. I've never had the DNF package manager mess something up. It seems to be super reliable and really performant when it comes to dragging in dependencies and doing all the right things. So dragging in some dependencies here, it's gonna go ahead and download those. And also it seems really intelligent when it comes to finding uh, local mirrors and that kind of thing. Uh, compared to what yum used to be like where you had to tell it to do that specifically just overall It just seems really neat tidy and performant and for a Linux desktop. I mean you can't ask for more than that Okay, so let's have a look Right now we're using about 1200 meg of, uh, of RAM out of the eight that I've given it you can see we're running the GNOME desktop 3.34.1 and the Linux kernel 5.3.7. So it's slightly more up to date than what is coming out with the Ubuntu 19.10 releases. Uh, but as always, GNOME is a little bit thirsty. Now, interestingly enough, I'm also gonna open up HTOP here and have a look at how things are moving around. Uh, and I, I do wanna pull up very quickly an article from Pharonix, which basically ran, uh, ran Fedora through a bunch of different benchmarks uh, through their test suite that they have, and compared Fedora 31 with uh, some of the other contemporary releases and past releases of uh, Fedora and, uh, and Ubuntu as well. And also they pitted them up against probably what is known as the performance champion in the Linux world, which is Clear Linux uh, that's backed by Intel. So uh, in this article, they kind of, uh, they maintain that, uh, that Fedora 31 is uh, maybe not benching as as well as it could and it does seem that across the board um, Fedora is a little bit more sluggish uh, in system performance compared to Ubuntu 19.10 and also uh, Clear Linux especially. Now the interesting thing is that when it comes to uh, benchmarks, benchmarks are very synthetic. Obviously they're performing specific tasks that may or may not reflect real world uh, usage. So it's interesting to see the discussion that's going on in uh, for the results of these benchmarks. So take that with a grain of salt is I guess what I'm saying because for me personally it feels like the uh, the Wayland display server, uh, the hardware compatibility and power management of the of the kernel 5.3 and GNOME 3.34.1 combined leads to a really snappy and performant and smooth Fedora release. Now, apart from removing support for 32-bit hardware, uh, which, you know, that's that's been coming for a long time now, 
Uh, you still have the ability to run 32-bit libraries and 32-bit software, so don't freak out about that. It's just 32-bit hardware as a system. Uh, Fedora no longer supports that. Apart from that, there's not actually too much more to report on when it comes to Fedora 31. So like I said, if Fedora is already something that you enjoy, then you're going to enjoy Fedora 31. It's a very simple upgrade process uh, through and again, the Fedora team have uh, put a little notification out there saying the process of what it looks like to upgrade from 30 to 31. And for most people that I hear around the place, uh, it seems that upgrading is a fairly, uh, it's a fairly non-issue. It, it seems to go ahead really smoothly and all of the uh, repositories seem to be running really well at the moment. Um, now, if you are a new user and you're looking at adopting Fedora for yourself, the one main tip that I can give you is to jump onto RPM Fusion and uh, enable this repository as one of the first things that you do. Now, you will notice that when I was in the Software Center before, uh, it was asking, when you first launch the, uh, the GNOME Software Center, uh, it'll ask you whether or not you want to enable uh, if you want to enable non-free repositories for things like NVIDIA drivers and for Steam. This is really, really helpful. Um, I always enable them, but it is good that they, uh, that they make sure that they make that distinction between what's free and open source software and what isn't. And so when you install Fedora, you know for a fact that you're only dealing with free and open source software out of the box and you opt in to use anything else, whether that be, um, you know, software that has got uh, some uh, some more restrictive licensing or whether it is just flat out proprietary software or flat pack or anything else. Now the question comes for me, what is the appeal of a distribution like Fedora when it's going up against uh, some really quality GNOME releases? And I'm not saying this is a criticism of Fedora because I think what Fedora does and the back end uh, and just the elegance that they have under, under the hood, as it were, uh, is really nice as a Linux system. Um, but I'm curious to know from you guys, what is the appeal of something like uh, Fedora when compared to something like Pop! OS or even Ubuntu uh, as a desktop, as they all run GNOME and, uh, and they're all pretty performant these days. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching as always, and, uh, and I will see you in the next video.